So to start things off, I'm going to address one of the things that had me most disappointed with this season. No beach episode. Come on, Card Fight Vanguard, give me at least one episode so far each season that gave me some nice Misaki fan service. And now that she's got that haircut, you just take it all away from me. Damn you! Cue title scene. Vanguard Link Joker is the third season in Card Fight Vanguard, that show that went from being really good to really bad faster than you can say Transformers. And like Transformers, the third season kind of had people split. Some really liked it, some really didn't. As for me, well, let's start off with where we begin with this season. Essentially, we start off, I think, a few months after season two ends. Aichi's now in high school. He's got a bit of a haircut. He's in school with Misaki. And then they did something really interesting. Kai and Kamui, at least in the advertising, got cut from the main character roles. And instead, we Korin now got upgraded to a main character role. And we got two new characters, Naoki and Shingo. And if we're perfectly honest... I was fine with this. After season two of Kai just being a blank slate and Kamui being one of the most annoying as hell characters I've ever seen in anything, I was happy to see them go. I still really like Masaki and she's still my favorite character in the franchise. And even though I'm not a huge fan of Korin because she just doesn't do much and she's very generic, even her look just screams generic female character. I was interested to see where we were going to go with this. Increasing roles, giving new purposes, new characters. And at first, it really worked. First up, the character that really makes this work is Naoki. Essentially, Naoki's backstory is that he went to the same school as Aichi when they were younger. Aichi went to this private school, because I guess this family is wealthy. And the thing is, the bullying was so bad that Aichi changed schools. Naoki always witnessed this, but never did anything, and this guilt has followed Naoki into his high school years. And let me just say, that alone is great. It's bringing us back from this Yu-Gi-Oh! ripoff crap back into where this show was good at. Bringing the characters into a sense of reality. Showing someone who wanted to do the right thing but couldn't. Kind of gave into peer pressure in a sense. Just like real kids do. It brought us back to that reality. And now he is just a really fun character in general. Now that he's in high school and he sees Aichi again... He wants to reconnect with him. He wants to become a friend. He wants to sort of get the guilt off his shoulders of all those years ago. And Aichi as well is kind of back to being a character again. He's in high school and you sort of see how that's different for him. Vanguard isn't popular in this private school, so he tries to make it a thing and a club. He's got an arc again. You see where he's going. His emotions are back. They never address anything but season two, but who the hell cares at this point? And then we get into Shingo, and basically now he wants to get into Vanguard, and our commies, eradicators. Oh, and this season also introduced, they never explain where it comes from, it's just there. Aichi now uses the Liberator deck, or as I like to call it, Go Plus for Days, motherfucker! But essentially we introduce now Shingo, who's an Aichi fanboy. Again, something that probably would happen in the real world. Just a huge Vanguard nerd who is obsessed with Aichi as a player. And the introduction episode for this character was hilarious. It was very well done. And Corrin, too. I was really interested to see where things were going to go with that character. Last but not least, does Masaki have a role? Actually, yes! They introduced this concept of Aichi wants to start a Vanguard club. Um, there's something that holds Masaki back. She's nervous. She doesn't want to join. There's something very anxious about her with it. And they never really say 100% why. Which is so smart. They leave it up for you, the viewer, to reconnect with the character and understand what she's going through and interpret it for yourself. Because of this, she is now rehumanized, and we're back on track. She also got a best friend who didn't annoy the living shit out of me, which was fun, too. And essentially, that's the first part of this season. It's a filler arc about them wanting to go to the high school championships and win. You could make the argument that, yes, it's downgrading things. Um, erasing two main characters just because you don't know what to do with them isn't really the right thing to do. But, hell, for a filler arc that kind of went fairly run-of-the-mill, it was still entertaining, and it brought the characters back, and it was really fun to watch, and Naoki is my close second for favorite character of this show. And then the Link Joker, the namesake of this season, starts. For those of you who don't know, Link Joker is a clan in the game designed around the concept of locking, which means turning the unit face down and having that whole part of the field be unoccupiable for a turn or two. It's basically a lockdown deck. 
And this art pretty much goes right back to what the fuck was wrong with Season 2. Basically, what happens is we introduce the arc, and I might get into spoiler territory. I'm not exactly sure what counts as spoilers, because most shows just divide filler up into their own little seasons. So, bear with me if I... If you consider what I give a spoiler, I apologize. I'm just trying to explain this in a way that makes sense. But essentially what happens is, Takedo, who we still don't know what the hell he is, we don't know what he's for, what he does, or even what he is, I said that already, but still, what the fuck. He, Link Joker, is Void, the main villain from the last season, who is back because God knows we introduced something new or continue the story. Let's just do what we did before. And once again, he finds someone to possess. This time he possesses Takedo, turns him evil. We didn't really know if he was good or bad last season, but whatever. And I'm not going to lie, the actor who plays Takedo, you could tell, has a lot of fun with this performance. It is entertaining, but it doesn't get enough time to really sink in or have any emotional connection. Because of what happens next. What ends up happening is that person is connected to this chick in the high school who, through one convoluted plot point after another, possesses Naoki and does what's called reversing, turning them evil. And what do they do when they're evil? Challenge Aichi to a car fight! Aichi beats Naoki, naturally, and Aichi never does anything. It's like we just go back. We go back from Aichi finally being proactive, taking the lead and being a good character, and he just does nothing. It's not like, hmm, my main character seemed to have had his mind under manipulation. I have dealt with similar things to this twice before. Maybe I should look into it! This never occurs to him or anyone else except Kai, who has had no time to him in a season and a half! Kai decides, I'm going to go check things out, I'm going to look into Takedo, I'm going to do what Aichi should be doing because it's his show! So, Kai goes, and he goes to Takedo, who is evil, and there's this crap about Kai not thinking he's good enough, even though we've only ever seen him lose twice, and Kai ends up becoming evil, and because he wants to get stronger in this universe that is supposed to be more realistic, and with a character who, in theory, should not be this obsessed with Vanguard because we're supposed to be connected, and there's supposed to be some reality to him. But no, nope, he's just an evil villain, and he goes around, and he reverses other people, so is Aichi going to go after him, take up the hunt, do a little Captain America Winter Soldier action? Nope. We then have to sit through three boring-as-hell filler arcs about Ren, Leon, and Kamoy, who have to stop other players in the show who have been reversed. At first, this could be cool, but the thing is that um, all three of these characters are fucking invincible. I never believe that Ren or Leon is going to lose, and I still don't like Kamoy. So all of these arcs serve no purpose, especially because after the, everyone's been unreversed, which all you have to do is beat them to do, which is very anticlimactic, nothing happens. They don't tell Aichi what's going on. They don't start searching for themselves. They just decide, ah, it's over. We'll just avoid it because plot reasons or what little plot there is. Oh, my God, how did we go back to this? It's just, again, marketing more crap turning everything down so that way there's no emotional investment or intensity in anything. Anytime something gets close to seeming scary or having real drama to it, there's more crappy humor, there's more time wasted, and there's more boring exposition about crap. Well, maybe we can focus on the card fights a little. Nope! Now we start skipping turns, which on the one hand can make sense because to anyone who plays Vanguard, you know, the first couple of turns can be a little monotonous. There's no OTKing in this game, so, yeah, I can understand that to a point. But then sometimes they skip turns where things seem to happen and it makes it hard to follow the card fights. So essentially, you've taken away your action, your characters are back to having no development, and it's just boring. Aichi does nothing. He does less than last season. And last season he did nothing. They just write the main character out so we can focus on crap no one cares about or no one is interested in. By doing that, you once again just take out all the emotion, all the investment. Everyone is invincible this season, so why should I care? And more importantly, if no one's developing or growing or these arcs are influencing anything, then what's it matter? There's no emotional investment, no actual plot. If they wanted to go back to ripping off Yu-Gi-Oh, at least have some level of intensity. At least in Season 2, there was sort of a sense of consequence. 
that what was going on sort of mattered, but here all that's eliminated. And even though I like the first part of this season, there's no way else to say it. Card Fight Vanguard Link Joker is a 3 out of 10. It was boring, it was stupid, it started out with so much promise and then dropped. Oh, and you still don't give a crap about corn in the end. And so, what did you think? Because some people liked Season 3, and again, it could have been really good, but if you liked it, comment below why or what you thought about it. And as always, click to like and click to subscribe, because next week we're finishing off Vanguard Month with Season 4, which I haven't finished yet. I'm scared.